She was a sapphic, a homosexual, a woman who loved other women. Today, we're talking about one of my favorite things, lesbians. Specifically, cozy games with lesbian or sapphic representation. I'm sapphic myself, a non-binary lesbian, and there's nothing I love more than spotting queer representation in my favorite cozy games. The word sapphic comes from the ancient Greek poet Sappho, who's known for her lyric poetry, much of which described her attraction to women, and it has come to serve as an umbrella term that includes lesbians, bisexuals, pansexual people, essentially non-men who are sexually or romantically attracted to women or femininity. Now, of course, every single farm sim with cottagecore vibes and buff women in overalls and soft women in aprons picking wildflowers is sapphic. I don't make the rules, I just enjoy them. But for this video, I've handpicked a variety of games, all cozy and perfect for mindful gaming, that include sapphic relationships or stories. Most of these are also on Nintendo Switch, but I'll let you know as we go through them. Oh, and there's no order to these. I'm not that organized. Lake is one of my favorite games released in the last year. It is a narrative adventure set in the beautiful lake town of Providence Oaks. You play as Meredith Weiss, who's taking a vacation from her life and career in the city to take over her father's mail route in her hometown for two weeks. You drive the truck around the peaceful and quaint town, delivering mail and getting to know the locals. As you progress each day, you make choices that define your experience and give you more insight into Meredith's life and past. My favorite character is the owner of the local video store, Angie. And you guessed it, she's sapphic. You can even choose to romance her, leading to some very wonderful and adorable queer moments. But whether you're dating them or not, all of the characters feel incredibly real, the voice acting is excellent, and I felt really connected to the game's story. I also just loved driving around the lake and taking in the sights. Lake is available on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. No word yet on whether it'll come to the Switch, but I'm hoping. Honestly? Who isn't queer in Coffee Talk? Another chill narrative game, Coffee Talk is a visual novel about coffee and conversation. You play as the owner of a coffee shop in an alternative, fantastical Seattle, serving coffee and listening to the stories and conversations of your customers. And your customers in Coffee Talk are interesting, with elves, orcs, even mermaids popping in for coffee. And let me tell you, the dev team understood the assignment of queer fashion. But of course, one of my favorite characters and the reason Coffee Talk is solidly on this list is Myrtle the Orc, indie game dev, book lover, and canon sapphic, who just might be starting a little something with Aqua, one of the sweetest characters in the game. Coffee Talk is available on Nintendo Switch, PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. And even better, there is a confirmed sequel currently in development. The community has been telling me to play Fire Emblem Three Houses for a while now, and I finally bought it and started playing last week. Three Houses is a tactical RPG with a really engaging turn-based battle system, but it also incorporates some simulation and exploration elements that make it perfect for a cozy gamer looking for a bit of combat, strategy, and story. Now, I'm still getting going with this game, so I'll cover it in future videos, but I had to include it here because of her. As you progress deeper into the story of Three Houses, you build relationships with various characters, eventually unlocking the ability to romance and even marry them. And you guessed it, this game allows for sapphic romances. While not every femme character is romanceable by a femme main character, the options for sapphics look pretty… well, great. I'll keep you posted on this game as I play through it, but I can already tell that deciding who to marry is going to be more challenging than the combat. Fire Emblem Three Houses is only available on Nintendo Switch. 
If Cat Cafe Manager wasn't stereotypically sapphic enough just from its emphasis on cats and plants and lattes, the game features a character, Carla Lala, who has two witchy moms. Though you don't actually meet her moms in the story, they play a pretty important role in her character development, and as you get to know Carla, you learn more about her queer family and what drives them. There's also some really sweet dialogue about her mom's preferences for witchy safe spaces that felt so familiar to me as a queer person. There's also a gay fisherman character who is married to a charming librarian, Gavin, you meet later on. Not even to mention the ways that my own sapphic cafe owner flirted shamelessly with Finley the budding musician. I loved the gender-inclusive character customization at the beginning of the game, the adorable cafe decor, and managing the cafe was really fun without being overly challenging. My one criticism of the game is that it's a bit too short for its price. It's about $20 and I was left expecting a much longer story and more engaging end game content. Cat Cafe Manager is available on PC and Nintendo Switch. Turnip Boy Commits Tax Evasion is a silly, wholesome, and wildly engaging game about a turnip who is, yeah, avoiding paying taxes. You solve puzzles, harvest crops, explore dungeons, and battle angry beasts, all on your journey to take over a corrupt veggie government. I bet right now you're wondering how a game about a turnip boy could possibly be sapphic. Well, the answer, friends? is in the fruits. Lesbian berries, to be specific. Blueberry and strawberry are two absolutely precious little gay berries, and they are definitely, oh, definitely in love. Everything about this game is adorable, from the colorful pixel art to the characters. Just look at Annie the Avocado. There's little snails that slide around and fireflies. If you haven't checked this one out, you really should. Turnip Boy is available on Nintendo Switch, PC, Mac, and Xbox. Unpacking is a point and click game about, well, unpacking. You open up virtual moving boxes and figure out where various household items fit. It feels like a relaxing puzzle game, but there's more to it. There's a story to be told here, and I love how it is illustrated almost entirely through belongings. As you sift through things like toothbrushes and plushies and dinner plates, you learn about the story's main character, a woman you never meet or see. There's no dialogue or overt storytelling, just eight different moments of unpacking for eight different moves. The main character, though, is sapphic, presumably bisexual, and there are are plenty of context clues to confirm this as you play through the game. I love unpacking for its attention to small details and the tranquility and originality of telling an emotional story through items alone. Unpacking is available on Nintendo Switch, PC, Mac, Xbox, and PlayStation. Gone Home is a walking simulator, an interactive narrative exploration game set in the 90s. You arrive home after a couple of years abroad only to find your family's new house empty, with a note from your sister posted on the door. Don't come looking for me. You wander through the home, picking up objects, rifling through drawers, reading letters, anything to find out what might have happened. What I love about Gone Home is how tactile it is. You really feel like you are making Making your way through a family's home. So many small details to notice that add to the story. The game can feel unsettling at times, but have no fear, this is not a horror game. What makes Gone Home sapphic and moving is the story of your sister, Sam. As you make your way through the house, you learn about Sam's story and queer identity. With family and interpersonal struggles that might feel familiar to many LGBTQIA players. Honestly, this is a moving story that deserves to be told in its own way. You should pick it up and have it unfold before you. Gone Home is available on Nintendo Switch, PC, Mac, Xbox, and PlayStation. I just included Calico in my recent video on the best Switch games for plant lovers. I've linked it here if you'd like to check it out, but I have to mention it quickly here as well. There are quite a few queer characters in Calico, which is another game featuring cats and lots of plants. Am I a sapphic stereotype? 
but one of my favorite characters is Blossom, who is canonically sapphic and just beautiful. Calico is one of my favorite games to unwind to, and I can't recommend it enough. And those are just some of the sapphic, women-loving women stories currently being told in cozy games. Can you think of any others? I know I can. Let's start a convo on queer rep and gaming in the comments. Looking for more cozy games to check out or interested in gaming for mindfulness? Check out the rest of my videos or stay tuned. I post new videos twice a week. Thanks so much for watching and take care.